they're beautiful animals, they've got the interesting characters. You know, they have as much right to be here on the planet as we do. Unfortunately, despite all the voluntary effort in looking after dormice since the early 1990s, their numbers are still plummeting. Nationally, in those 40 odd years, they've gone down 70%. We are still in a position where dormice in the UK are teetering on the edge of extinction. They are a part of the nature in this countryside. That connectivity has to be restored. You get that right, then experience shows that actually we can successfully reintroduce dormice into landscapes where they used to be, but have now disappeared. It was really amazing to see the wildlife crossing the bridge for the first time. And so it has become what, it, what we wanted it to be, which was a wildlife corridor to maintain populations of dormice across what was a dual carriageway. It shows that if you do build a connective bridge for animals over a main road, they do actually use it. People like dormice, and it's a, it's a lovely thing to be involved with. So we have some dormice that came to us in the autumn from rescue centres. Um, our vet checks them over for any signs of illness, injury, abnormalities, who are looking for any diseases or parasites that they might be carrying. We carry out regular health checks of our dormice where we're looking to make sure their teeth are okay and not overgrown because that could stop them from eating. We check their eyes to make sure they're nice and clear. We also look through their fur, so we're looking to see if they've got any parasites such as mites or fleas or lice. So dormice coming in from the wild can be very badly injured or dehydrated. Uh, they can be very underweight if they haven't been able to feed. They do need a lot of initial care to get them back on their feet. And they, they come into captivity for various reasons. Sometimes people's cats catch them, sometimes Gardeners will cut down uh, trees that might have a nest inside it or trim a hedge and the nest actually is destroyed and the babies fall out and so they need to be hand reared. And we have a really good relationship with our local rescue centres so they often do the initial care of the dormice and then pass them on to us so that we can rehabilitate them. And we would only keep animals if our vet thinks that, that they are no longer in pain or, and have a good quality of life and they've recovered fully from these injuries. I feel really privileged to be able to work with dormice any day of the week. It's a species that lots of people would love to see in the wild, but very rarely do. It's just amazing to see them. They're beautiful animals, big back bulgy eyes, bushy tail, golden coats. When you handle them, they just sort of curl up in a ball, particularly when they're in torpor or in hibernation. And so the sort of cute R factor with dormice has never worn off for me, even though I, I see them several times a week. So I just, yeah, I do feel really, really privileged to be able to be working with them and to be making a difference to their populations as well. So the length of time that the dormice are with us really depends on their age and the particular year. So if we have a, a shortage of animals for the reintroduction programme that year or a particular sex of animals, we might use the animals for the next reintroduction. They have to be under two years old to be released. The dormice have suffered a 70% decline since the year 2000 in the UK. So we need to breed dormice to try to reintroduce them back into the woodlands where they used to occur. We work closely with the People's Trust for Endangered Species on the Dormouse National Reintroduction Programme. What we try to do is put them into sort of clusters of woodland so that we have several woodlands near to each other, which are linked by hedgerows and tree lines. And so the dormice then have a much better chance of colonising the whole landscape rather than if we just put them in one isolated woodland. And when we have new bloodlines of dormice, we put two unrelated animals together, a male and a female, at the start of the breeding season. And they have an enclosure to themselves and then we monitor them during the year to see if they produce any young. In April, 
we will go into the enclosures and look for dormice and sometimes we might have to very gently wake them up from hibernation so we'll dig up their hibernation nests and move them indoors where they wake up gradually and then we transport the dormice to London Zoo or Paynton Zoo where they go into the quarantine period for their health checks before release. It's really important that we have habitat restoration projects because there's no point releasing dormice into the wild if the habitat's not suitable because they're just going to become extinct again. Dormice that like dense undergrowth, coppicing woodlands can let more light into a woodland and that is really beneficial to woodland flowers like wood anemones and bluebells. So restoring a habitat for dormice benefits lots of other species.